We are handing out in this session before morning tea two important awards, uh, Collaborative Leader of the Year Award and Volunteer of the Year. And to announce these awards, please welcome back the Premier of New South Wales, Barry O'Farrell. Uh, I'm very excited to be presenting the award for Collaborative Leader of uh, the Year this year uh, for the very first time, because as we've heard this morning, uh, collaboration uh, is important and most successful research and innovation uh, has been as a result of that collaboration. And of course, leadership is vital to create the environment where great ideas can be turned into great innovation. Uh, leadership uh, needs help to make, uh, to make sure staff and communities are empowered so that people on the ground can solve the problems, no matter how big or small those problems are. So the finalists for Collaborative Leader of the Year, of the, sorry, for the Collaborative Leader of the Year Award are uh, Professor Michael Barton, the Research Director of Southwestern Sydney Local Health District. Professor Barton is internationally recognised for his work in cancer service, services research with strong national and international collaborations. Uh, Dr Craig Bootless, Department Head Infectious Diseases, Illawarra, Illawarra Shoalhaven Local Health District. Uh, Dr Bootless has been nominated for his work in establishing the multi-sectoral refu refugee health response for restructuring infection control services and introducing an innovative self-funding antibiotic program from Bulleye to Milton that's been recognised nationally. Adjunct Associate Professor Dr Gabriel Shannon, the Clinical Leader of Clinical Governance at Western New South Wales Local Health District. Dr Shannon's been teaching resident medical officers, registrars and students since 1985. He's been nominated for his ability to engage, lead and support a large team of diverse stakeholders leading to significant change to the traditional models of care. And Dr Shannon has inspired many, many medical students to return to rural-based hospitals for internships and postgraduate training. And finally, uh, Rosemary Garthwaite, the Rural Group Manager, Border Murrumbidgee Local Health District. Rosemary's been nominated for her dedication, support and promotion of effective teamwork. Through her everyday actions, Rosemary inspires all those she comes into contact with to strive to provide improved patient outcomes through better teamwork. Over the past five years, Rosemary's been the main driver behind the change management for models of care, clinical governance, and planning. And I assume in here, Norman, is the... Uh, the winner. This, this is the envelope. This is the envelope. So the winner... Sorry, I'm not Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> I don't know. Don't put yourself down. The, uh, <laughs> the winner of the Collaborative Leader of the Year Award is Dr Gabriel Shannon, Western New South Wales Local Health District. Thank you very much. And, and Minister, and thank you, uh, everyone. This is, um, uh, I guess in many ways, it's a rather strange award to give to an individual. Um, it's very hard to collaborate by yourself, I found. Um, and I think we've heard, some, uh, we've heard some great talks this morning. I think uh, if Robin Ward had been in for it, uh, she's given a fantastic talk on collaboration. So I feel really quite humbled. Um, uh, my, a lot of my fellow collaborators are in the audience, and we're all guilty, I think. Uh, but with a team like the one I'm working with, um, why wouldn't you collaborate with them? I mean, it's, uh, it's much more stimulating. We know that teamwork is where health is going and how we have to, uh, we have to work in teams to, to get the best for our patients. Um, I should just mention, I guess, a few of the people I'm working with. Uh, our Director of Nursing, Sue Patterson, uh, Rachel Devlin, who's our nurse unit manager on one of our medical wards. Uh, Catherine Nowlin, our general manager. Um, Scott McLaughlin, uh, who's the chief executive. So all these people are a really great team. Uh, my colleagues back in Orange I'm working with and across the area. And I guess the other really important group in the collaboration that we're trying to do is our patients and families. And, uh, and they're the people we're who are the most enthusiastic group, I think, to collaborate with. So it's really a very stimulating way of working. And I think having uh, worked for many years in the health sector, um, now working in a team with this kind of collaborative approach, uh, it is really so rewarding and it's, it's the way to go. So thank you very much. I'm also pleased to be able to announce this morning the Volunteer of the Year Award. Now, we know that volunteers are critical to world-class levels of care that are provided in our hospitals and communities. And I think one of the great things about the country in which we live, and reminded by yesterday's slightly warm day here in Sydney, that volunteers contribute in so many ways 
to the lifestyles that uh, we take for granted uh, in this country. Uh, but nowhere more is that important uh, than those who make a valuable contribution uh, within our health system. Uh, the roles that uh, volunteers do in our hospitals, as you know better than I do, uh, are incredibly diverse. <laughs> Assisting with meal times, providing transport services, running canteens and ki uh, kiosks, all the way through to, uh, to entertainment, as well as operating uh, mobile library services, just to name a few. Uh, they really are community champions who provide valuable support to our paid professionals and can help ease the transition from hospital uh, to community for so many patients, particularly those, I think, in rural and regional areas. Uh, they have the trust and understanding needed to engage people um, when, when they need it most. And I have to say that uh, we need, as a health system, to do everything we can to cherish and encourage and promote uh, the use of volunteers across all of our facilities. So the finalists for the Volunteer of the Year Award are Pe Peggy Dickinson, a volunteer from Concord Hospital. Um, Peggy, this is rude, but they've told me to say that you are a sprightly 90-year-old. I don't normally mention women's na ages. Um, Peggy's been nominated for her achievements at Concord, where she's volunteered three to four days a week for the last 16 years. Her achievements include managing the hospital's weekly volunteer market day, raising about $1,000 a week, coordinating the volunteer office and escorting patients to clinics around Concord's hospital campus, uh, which of course is about 40 acres in size. We use acres in this case, Peggy, for your benefit. The, uh, and overseeing, and my benefit, frankly, and overseeing, and overseeing the hospital's Army Nurses Museum, which attracts around 3,500 students annually, making it one of the busiest small museums, according to a survey recently conducted by the Powerhouse. Uh, the second nominee is Barbara Moore, who's president of the Bellingen Health Action Group. Barbara's been nominated for providing exceptional leadership through the Bellingen Health Action Group, which directs people into the most suitable form of volunteering and coordinates multiple services within the Bellingen Hospital. The group uses multiple websites, including Facebook and media collaborations, to promote community support for that great facility. Uh, the next is Peggy Roberts, the volunteer from Sutherland Hospital. Uh, Peggy has volunteered at Sutherland Hospital for nearly 30 years. Uh, she leads the Lilac vol Volunteers and is a ward visitor, a falls prevention volunteer and a ward granny in the children's ward. She promotes volunteering and the benefits received not only to herself, but for hospital patients and their families. Last year, Peggy was recognised with an invitation to afternoon tea with the Governor-General at Admiralty, Admiralty House. And our final nominee is Judy Day from the Children's Hospital at Westmead. Judy has years of experience working with children as a primary teacher, as well as, as, well as caring for an unwell child. She joined the Family Support Volunteer Program in June 2011 the only program to support children in palliative care in their own homes. Judy's shown a constant enthusiasm and commitment to supporting and empowering children in palliative care and their families, and in offering practical support uh, around their homes. Judy also volunteers for the Arabic-speaking women's group, which supports women caring for chronically unwell children who are isolated. She also provides activities for the patients and siblings uh, through this group. And so the... Um, uh, recipient of the Volunteer of the Year Award is Peggy Roberts from South East Sydney Local Health District. Well, I feel a bit lost for words. My husband would say that's most unusual. Um, this is such a thrill. I've, I just enjoy so much doing what I do and I suppose the fact that I've been doing it for so long would give you an indication that yes, that's what I like. You know. But uh, I get a great deal from being um, the volunteer down at Sutherland. It's a great hospital. Um, I get a lot of help. Um, at this stage, I'd like to thank Linda Vary, who is our uh, volunteer coordinator, and Linda was the one that nominated me. I felt very embarrassed, actually, to be nominated, um, because as a volunteer, I sort of, you don't expect to get anything. But anyway, I can't say any more. Just thank you very much. Could the other volunteer runner-up, runners-up, please stand, because this is such an important part of our, our, our service here. And uh, this is Peggy in the red jacket. Peggy Dickinson.
and congratulations to the, all the finalists in the in, on the Collaborative uh, Leader of the Year Award. Um, we don't achieve things by themselves. Look, great morning. Uh, lots of important messages you know, about community resilience, community development, doing things together and getting big responses. You know, 5% average weight loss will mean that sudden death in Aboriginal communities and will reduce dramatically. You don't have to uh, have an abdomen like Brad Pitt's to actually um, really make a huge change to your, uh, your well-being. And you heard what their HbA1Cs were doing as well. Just fantastic work about mobilizing communities. Um, we heard about the challenges of innovation and trying to free up the system for innovation albeit within, with, some, with some rigor and discipline about it, but nonetheless opening up our ideas and our minds, identifying leaders who are going to innovate, and they're not always going to be the people who have the power in the system, and we need to facilitate that. And we need to be willing to tell others about our successes, and more importantly, tell others about our failures so that we learn from those. Could you please thank everybody who's been involved in this morning?